I'm noticing a little bit of flex in the chassis. Uh-oh. That can't be good. I wonder if it got bent. I don't remember dropping it, but maybe it could have dropped. <laughs> Who knows? Hey, come here. I think something weird is happening with my trackpad. I can move it around, but when I try to click it and I push down, it doesn't click. I know I want to sell it because I have all the components for my new gaming computer I'm building. And I need to figure out if it's worth it or not. So I'm going to open it up and I'm going to look inside. Hi everyone, this is my husband Justin. He has a degree in computer engineering and he was going to do this part with us. So the trackpad isn't working and we're going to have to find out what's going on. We have a few ideas. We did some research online and suspect it might be the battery. So we're going to take a look. So I got my iFixit kit here. We'll get the rest of that out of the way. And what I like to do before I take anything apart is I like to set up my grid so that I know where to put the screws. So you don't lose anything and nothing gets out of place. So I'll start, I think this is a Torx bit. Cause I'm sure like me, you've probably lost screws while you're putting something together. So we're taking off the screw in the top left-hand corner and putting it in the left-hand space. And we're just gonna go clockwise around. That way... Now I'm noticing a little bit of flex in the chassis. Uh-oh. That can't be good. I wonder if it got bent. I don't remember dropping it, but maybe it could have dropped. <laughs> Who knows? I have loved this computer and I'm sad I will no longer have a pink, shiny, happy computer, but um, it's just coming around that time. You said clockwise. It's just coming around that time. Oh, well, I'm just getting this one up because it's bending so much. I kind of wanted to be consistent. I did say clockwise, but... Um, it's coming around that time that it's been about two or three years. Do you see how That's much... That's really coming up here. Do you see how much of a bend there is in yes. this? Yes. Wow, these screws... I'm like really worried about what's going on in there. Do you need me to hold this down? No, I don't think that helps. Okay. So as I'm unscrewing each of these uh, torque screws, the chassis is really starting to bend and I, I'm wondering what we're gonna find here. For those of you who don't know, the chassis is the back of the computer. It's the container or the holder, just like the chassis of a car. Okay, so now we've got all the screws off using the trusty magnet in, in here. Take that off. Oh it, my God. Do you see this? Yeah, it looks like a bunch of pillows. That doesn't look Ooh. safe at all. Get also, that. a little... Is that a hair? No, that's a no, cutout. No, that's, that's a cutout. It's pretty dusty. It's very dusty. But I don't know if you can see that. It, it doesn't look bent at all. No. So I'm going to set that aside. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get a lay of the land. This is the SSD. These are the two RAM chips. This is the Wi-Fi controller, the SATA SSD connection. So we're gonna get that out of the way. And then we're gonna unplug the battery. Now, is this dangerous? Is this like what makes things explode? It's my understanding. Oh, let me show you a little pro tip here. So we've got, we've got those screws set up there and we've got our iFixit kit. And I use this one Torx bit. And what I like to do is I like to set them kind of like toggles so I can see easily which bits I'm currently using. So this is the next bit that I'm going to be using here. That's a little drill bit. Which and is a little Phillips head. This has been so helpful having around the house. I never thought I needed a tiny little uh, drill kit, but I really, or a tiny little um, screwdriver kit, but I really do. So again, I'm going to use one of the other grids I've got here for the, on the Gamers Nexus pad, which is made of silicone. Wow, that's really bowing up. I thought 
maybe just one side was puffy, but it seems like it's a big pillow right now. So these Gamers Nexus uh, pads were great. I got it to do soldering with because it's temperature and chemical resistant. Uh, so it should be a little bit durable with soldering as long as I'm gentle with it. Whoa, look at that puffing up and pushing up already. I know. Can you feel it in the screws? Um, just in case you don't know, battery shouldn't look like this. I'm gonna show them the newer battery. So through the magic of video, we suspected that this might be, uh, this might be a problem with the laptop. And if you can see the thickness of this battery, is just really thick. It's almost, would you say, two to three times the thickness? Let's see. Here's the new battery on the right. It's a lot thinner. Wow. It's even a little like concave, I'd say. So it's really dangerous to have these batteries like that. If you were to take that on a plane or ship it, like if you had sold the laptop and it had gone on FedEx or something like that, two day air, who knows what it would have done at altitude and that pressure. So, that was the plan. <laughs> so one of the best reasons to kind of fix one of these, especially the battery before you sell it, is it allows you to then um, safely get this on a plane for part of sale. So mm. if you were to sell it locally or internationally. We decided that it was worth fixing up this quartz okay. laptop because it looks like it's even though it's a little bit older, people really like the chassis. I wonder, I wonder what people really like the chassis. Do they upgrade the insides of this with new hardware? If any of you know, that would be great to comment down below in the video. Yeah, we've been wondering because... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I lost that screw. I'll have to find it in just a second. I too love it. And it actually was a really great laptop and still is a good laptop. Um, I just need to update it, that's all, and we are- It's just that time. We like to yeah. update our machines every couple of years, and you've had this one for a number of years, and yeah. we want we want every computer to have a couple of lives out of it, get a couple of uses. Not end up in a landfill. Uh, we thought about converting this over to a Chromebook uh, for a child to use, possibly, at school. So I've got this, I'll take now this back Now what's that, place. that's the- this is the little SSD, the SSD card connector slot. for okay. a two and a half. I'm assuming it would be a, uh, an SSD. It's just for a two and a half drive. I don't know if it's got enough um, watts or amps or volts for, the, um, for a rotating drive per se. So the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put the battery in here and plug it in. It's all the little pins, right? and then we'll boot it up. And Should it's, we? it's my understanding that when you replace the battery, you've got to power cycle it a few times to train uh, the different parts of the computer about the capacity of the battery. Yes, that's what the instruction said. There it goes. Now, while it's open, should we blow some compressed air in it to get the, some of the dust I see out? Yeah, let's. You wanna try not to get the condensation to happen. Cause that will drive some moisture into those areas. And that one looks way better than this one though. <laughs> yeah, one of these is the CPU cooler and the other one is for the GPU. This would explain why it was getting hotter. <laughs> or the fans were just running, whoa. Ooh. See how I tilted that upside down and it really condensed out? Wow, they look so much better. Now, do we need to look, get it under there or anything? making sure all of the, the vents are clean. The rest of the laptop looks pretty good. Okay, so okay, I that think seems that's very simple. And then we just put 
the backing back on, but I should probably... Oh, we're going to blow off the back, too. The back. So okay. we'll just set this up upside down. Give it a quick dust off. We can be a little bit rougher with this. Yeah, do we have a microfiber? Let's use a microfiber. Um, I do, quick. yeah. We keep a nice set of microfiber cloths on hand because they're amazing around the house, not just for electronics, but for any dusting. They're really, and they're reusable. They're, yeah, they're really good at grabbing on to the dust. Because of all of the microfibers. <laughs> Okay, so that's there. We'll put this back on. Oh, let's get one more. Some of that went through the... Let the condensation evaporate before we trap it back in. It's like a window defroster. Okay, put this back on. Now, if I'm noticing right away how much flatter this wants oh, to lay. Yeah. It's night and day difference. I wonder if the trackpad will make a clicking sound. Yeah, it'll be interesting to yeah, retest it and see if that fixed the trackpad issue. So I'm going to start in the top left. If I can get this. Oh, that's why it's not working. Silly me. I got the wrong It was the there. wrong one. <laughs> okay. Right. And since me. we pushed it down, we were able to tell which one we had used. And we were able to find it really quickly. Mm -hmm. And then now, you're gonna go catty corner, right? Yeah, so now when you put screws back in, it's best to kind of alternate. And wait, we should line this up. Here, I'll loosen this one a little bit more. So you should alternate, put the screws in so that they, they fit and help self-align whatever you're putting back together. Especially when it's maybe been bent out of shape a little bit. Make sure you don't, can you let go? Yeah. Make sure you don't cross thread the screws. They should go in fairly gentle. Uh, these are machine screws. And if you don't have them in straight, uh, you can re-thread it and either strip the screws or strip the hole that it's going into. That sounds bad. Yeah. So if it's, if it's not going in real gentle, then don't some, force it. Yeah. Don't force <laughs> it. You can strip them and then you wouldn't be able to use them. And uh, re-tapping the chassis uh, won't restore it to like a brand new condition per se. If you notice a little bit while I'm doing this, sometimes I have to back out the screw just a little bit if I didn't get it just right on the way in. This pink is such a pretty color. I wish they would make more vibrant anodized colors like this. Yeah, and because it's not a wrap, it stays pink and it stays in amazing condition like this. And feels really nice. <laughs> okay. Now, as you guys saw, I could still completely use my computer. The computer was useful. I could go on the internet, I could run Excel, I could run small programming tasks, I could run Baldur's Gate, many, many games. And I there just thought no something was weird with the trackpad. But I didn't know, I genuinely did not know that that battery bulge was happening. I had no clue. So, I'll try to turn it on. And if you notice, the trackpad- <gasps> Oh my God. At least tactically, it feels, not tactically, it's tactilely. You can uh, feel it click, listen, every yeah. All right. All right. Password entered. Ta-da. It's here. And oh, wait, let's try to click. No, no. How much charge is on the battery? Uh, so in oh, this. Oh, wow. So right now the laptop thinks. Oh, did you click it? Oh, yeah. 88%. I, was... He didn't even notice. 88%. So now we'll have to power cycle this a few and times look. to get the battery fully I accommodated. I can drag. I clicked. It knows it's there. It works. So, wow. So thank you for joining us for this tip. We're going to sell this laptop and get it ready to go and make another video about the best way to get your laptop mm -hmm. prepped for sale beyond fixing it up, you know, with a simple battery fix. So that's it'll be all about 
prepping it, moving your files, and getting everything ready to go. So stay tuned for that. Okay, thank you. Bye. Bye.